from the technical trader. Thanks for being here. As you can see, there's the front page of my website. That's me. Um, basically, it's a tech, it's a trading room for active traders uh, with uh, you know lots of ideas and some very very seasoned people in there. Uh, but y y yours truly has over 55 years of Wall Street technical analysis experience doing this since I'm a kid. And uh, the, bo the bottom line is it's a place where there's um, very strong recommendations every day. I can show you, you know, even stuff from today that we had that were fantastic in a market that basically didn't go anywhere so far. Uh, we can take a quick look at the markets and see where they might be. And you can see the coils that developed after a pullback this morning, um, trying to break out, but the markets basically are flat with the Dow down 154 and the S&P up 256. Uh, advanced declines and up-down volume, slightly positive, and they have been all day. So I think there's a positive divergence on the market itself. And certainly, I'm a believer that it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. And individually, because we're day traders and swing traders, in my room, you got ideas every day you can make money on. Here's some examples real quickly. Uh, today, we were, well, this is a swing trade of mine as well uh, that I put on ABDL. I want to show you the daily chart. When it broke out here, I gave you a swing. It consolidated for a couple of weeks and it's broken back out again. My targets now are 11 and a half and as high as 15 to 17 if this thing really gets going. Today on the day trade and the breakout here and the consolidation so far so good and it's coiling for maybe a late run to the 10 and a quarter area. Uh, that's one of our day trades from today as well. Neon node was another we uh, went into late in the session after it broke out and you can see that's running. Uh, KTRA was a beautiful pop and coil this morning. We we're watching it pre-market. It popped out and it's been running all day and it spiked up. Literally went from where we went in around seven to 10 and a half. We got out most of our people in the 10 range and the stock then uh, pulled back and now it's consolidating and coiling again. ARCE popped and coiled right about there's where we gave you a day trade around 11. It's currently 11, 55, 60 range and running and breaking out. Looks like it could be uh, near my 11.85 target before the day's over. EHTH popped and pulled back. I gave it a day trade uh, when it was trading around four. It moved up to four and three quarters. As you can see, um, we got out most of our people out in that four <clears throat> 60, 70 zone when it ran up uh, about 20, 25% from where we picked it. Okay, TA with a pop and pull back. When it started to move, we went long a day trade 64 and three quarters and quickly was 67 and a quarter before pulling into a coil. ONCY popped, coiled, broke out, day trade right there, just under two. Went up to $2.28 for a scalp trade. It's coiling, it may go higher. <clears throat> Good RX with a pop and pull back and then started to go. That's where I indicated it's a buy for a day trade, the four and three quarters, went up to 529.30. And let's go to my next trade, Splunk. With a big pop and pullback, I gave you a day trade there at 86 and three quarters. Within minutes, literally, it was 89 and change. And then it pulled back, and now you see over 91 near 91, over 90 near 91. I can go on and on. There's quite a few stocks we had today that were big winners for us. Uh, Ruger was, uh, was one, and, and so was, um, I think it was MGNX, right? Pop, pull back, and then started to run. So we're, we trade day trade patterns, intraday patterns. AVDL is the stock I mentioned earlier. Nutanix, one of my favorites. Uh, pop, pull back, broke out. You got to put a day trade on. 29 and a half, it reached 30, 50, and it's still running. Uh, that's also a tech trader swing. And it broke out here and consolidated. We put a swing on it. And acting very well. Um, but let's get back to the tech trader for a minute. Um, the tech trader is a site where if you're a serious trader and you want serious day trade ideas, I come in every morning before the market opens. I spend an hour and a half going over charts and news and patterns and put out a focus list for all my people and then do an online webinar with everybody before the market opens and show them all those patterns and pick which ones may be buy alerts for the day. And then I'll update you constantly all day within 10 minutes of the opening. I come back on and show you the early patterns and how the trends may be developing early on. I may add a few more day trades at that point and update the ones that I already put out. But you'll see me nonstop all day going through my charts, like you just saw me doing this. By the way, here's an, this is a tech trader swing, MGNX. When it broke out right there, I put a swing on it. Within a week, it was much higher and reached both of my swing targets. 
it's pulled back and subsequently moving up again. So um, we do very well at techtrader.com. I think you will too. Come in and join us for two weeks for free, no credit card, just sign up and go to the techtrader.com site. You'll see this, click on start a free trial. Put your name, address, phone number, and username and password in and register. And that's all you need to do. And you have full service for two weeks for free. I think you'll find it very useful and probably make some money. Uh, for now, uh, I'd be willing to take some uh, trades. Uh, yes, we. Uh, a question here is: What do we do? We swing? Do we do swing trades? Absolutely. Uh, swing trades are very active. As a matter of fact, I put out, I think, three new ones today. If you go back into the tech trader, you'll see. And once you log in and sign in, I'll have to go and sign in another way. One second, please. Hang on a moment. Once you sign in, go to the trading room. You can go to the watch list and see all the swing trades that I put out here. The new ones were EHTH, VRNA, CECO today, and the ABDL and GEO and TBLA over the last couple of days I put out six new swings. So yes, I have to do the swing trades. And right, well, we will uh, be able to get, uh, shortly we've, we're working on a new SMS texting system to give you the swing trades by text. Uh, but feel free to Al to sign in and uh, at least check it out and see what we do and see if you're interested. The URL is the tech, the tech trader .com, the tech trader .com. Okay, so what I'd like to get is some questions now. We have it's QA time. I'd be willing to go over any chart you have. And then at the end of the day, end of the I'll, uh, end of the uh, presentation, I'll uh, to give you a few highlights of some of the stocks I really like and um, you give me a few free ideas. So does anybody have a question about any stocks at all? I see a couple. Of there here. was there was a few others if you if you scroll up a little. Right, I see them right now. So MANH, um, in general, I like any chart that has a kind of a V bottom with a pop-up and a platform or right-handed extension. This is a beautiful chart. And I also like the group. Software stocks, when the market is hot, are very hot. Note that today's action breaks it out across the declining tops line, across the 50, and it's very bullish. To get confirmation, a breakout over 130, I think it will get you going with targets in the mid 130s. The, the swing trade objective on this one would be 141. A run at this level where there's several highs may be tough to get to. So 140, 41 is my swing target. I like this pattern very much. FTNT, for trader one, one of my favorite patterns as well. It's a B bottom with a right hand extension as well. Um, it's got a bit of a declining top sign, very similar pattern to what we just saw with MANH, and it's in the same group. Um, this one's got a bit more difficulty because the resistance up here looks like 57, 58 zone. If you get to 58, your swing target is going to be 62.3. And beyond that, 70. But for me, and the stop has got to be around here. Obviously, don't let it go below yesterday's low under 50, 40, 45. Tyco wants to know about ET, phone home. Uh, energy transfer. Obviously, a really good long term chart as anything in the oil industry most likely has been. Based on what I'm seeing here, I can, I can conclude that there's obvious resistance right at the zone we're, we're challenging here. The confirmation will be over 13. Then your target's gonna be 14 and a half and 16 and a quarter in that range. CSX with today's potential rail dispute being settled, looking a lot better. This is a nice rising channel from a technical standpoint. It's very sharp and may not be able to you know, um, extend this in, on this angle, but right now the way it looks, it's probably headed for a test of 34 and a half, three quarters up here. 
ultimately across these highs would be my next target somewhere around 38. So let's go 34 and a half, 38 as targets for CSX. I do like this chart. Google. Google also has a V bottom or right hand extension. Folks, through all this negativity and all the bearishness in the last several weeks in particular, I stand alone as one of the few people that maintain it where uh, coming to the bottom of a five wave decline on most stocks with a thrust to the downside in the fifth wave to the bottom of the channel, like in the case of Google, a V bottom with a pop and then a pullback platform and then a breakout is very bullish. Now Google's target at resistance would be 105. Get to 105, 107 and a half, and 111 would be your next targets. MRNA. Um, look, it had a big, big drop. And it's trying to form some sort of base over the last year, basically. If you take a look at it, multiple bottoms down in here. The recent triple bottom and breakout and pullback has me thinking it may want to try a run at this, let's call it 10 month high. 197, if we get to this zone, would be your target. And then we're looking at somewhere around 225. Tesla. Well, you know, Tesla was the worst performing stock in, 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 other than, a, well, recently. I mean, Netflix looked pretty bad, but it's certainly leading now. Same with Meta. Look at these two. As bad as Netflix was here, dropping from 300 and, I mean, 600 and, or 704, sorry, 704 down to 164, a disaster. Look at the recovery to 318, nearly doubling. And Meta, which was also as ugly as they come, dropping from 384 all the way down to, in the 80s, 88 low, it now has a V bottom of the platform and a breakout is at the 50. It's also at a resistance here from the gap. Um, but if Meta gets through here, it's going to really help the NASDAQ 100. The targets are 130 and 140 for META. But getting back to Tesla, the declining tops line was broken yesterday with a big pop and then the pullback. It's an inside day today. It's very quiet. Um, it's a tough call, but I think it's a bottom. Let me check something. I don't believe this. Yeah, this is an outtake. That is not correct on my chart anyway. The high was 199. And this high, 200. So if you get to a, the $200 range, I would look for 215 and then 225.30 or more, maybe as high as 235.38. The NPH. Well, you know, I love the solar group. I like first solar better than this. Look at that chart. Powerhouse move, hitting a new all time, I mean, a new multi year high at 180 today. And folks, that's the highest level in 12 years for first solar. Now, it does look like a bearish and uh, pullback, but I'm okay with it for now. Um, but EMPH. You can see it has big resistance here too. If you get EMPH through here, then I would look for this. From a parallel channel standpoint, my target is 390, 95, maybe 400. That could be beautiful. Folks, are there any other questions? It looks to me like I've answered all of them. Here we go, Roblox. I had, a, I had this on my swing trade list for a while. The problem is it broke down here and we were stopped at 38. Got down to 29. And I, look, I like Roblox as a company. I don't like this chart. There's too many bullish charts for me to have to like try to understand why this one looks like it does. Is it bullish? No. Is it bearish? No, it's kind of neutral, uh, but it's in a bearish decline. It's a, and it, look, overall, when I look at this chart, I see a large multi-month falling wedge in here. It looks like this. Maybe if it starts 
taking out some resistance, but there's too many other, and the volume isn't great either. So for me, I would pass on Roblox for now, not that it can't go up, but I think there's better stocks moving at this point. CMI. Cummins, nice base breakout through a double top, retest it and go. It's a tough call as to what the angle is, but if it can keep up this angle, it would be a hell of a move. What I'm thinking is that a retest of these levels up here might be in order around 275. So I'd say that, that'd be my swing target, 270, 72. NUE, great company. Really like this company a lot. Um, and you can see the breakout over a quadruple top and a bull flag. That gets me very, very excited about this company. I think it's a leader in steel. And I got a target now, 163.4. 163.4 for a swing guard uh, target. Amazon. Well, I think Amazon's a laggard because when you come down and form this large wedge pattern, if it breaks to the downside, it can lead the market lower. So Amazon's got to get its button gear and make a move up through 97 and then take out one. And if you happen to get to that, then 103 and three quarters is your next target. That's a big one because there's a gap, price resistance, and a declining 50 day all at the same point in time. So that's going to be tough, tough, tough to get to. But if you get to 104 in that area, 105, you might be able to get Amazon moving. But right now, I would stay away. I don't like to look at that at all. McDonald's, um, it says sell here. Mike, um, I'm not, I, it's not to say that, okay, this is not the ideal sell setup. Let's put it that way. You have a big base and breakout. With so many stocks, I can show you 20 stocks that look terrible that are around my box of shorts lists. Let's take a look at some of them. That's negative. That's bearish. Look at the downtrend. When you're in those kind of charts, that's what you want to short. Not something that looks as strong as MCD. When the stock, and I, I, I look, when the stock breaks out and tests and tests and tests, this is a bull wedge, not a bear wedge. And how about this? It breaks out of this here, the measured move. 50, 50 points, or 315, 16 up here. I'm not kidding. So you better not short this stock unless you have a stop. And that stop has got to be right there. 276, very tight. Or you can give yourself some leeway at 281 too, but right there, uh, be really careful trying to short this stock. Now, if it got underneath 266, different story. Then I think it falls into the 258 and then 249 zones. I hope I answered your question. CLF in the steel sector. Nice inverse head and shoulders, a declining top sign broken. You can see it pushed up to the resistance of the last three weeks and punched through but couldn't follow through. It's the same thing with US steel. You can see US steel is up against resistance here, but it's just not thrusting through it. Now, if it does, US steel goes to 33. If, if CLF does, it'll probably go somewhere about 20. 19 to 20 zone. Here's your answer on that. Do with Packard. Triple, quadruple top up here. Once you get to it, once you do that, it's obvious resistance. So your target has to be a retest of this area near 17 three quarters. Once you get to 17 three quarters, you can see how it's three years or four years worth of resistance that if it breaks through, could be a substantial mover. Uh, so Mike, Teresa, I uh, hope I answered your questions. Anybody else? That's something they want to take a look at. Intel and AMD. Well, Intel is intri intriguing. I don't like this chart at all. 
and I told everybody to stay away for the last two years. Finally, it's showing some life as coming off of a low. But take a look at the declining top sign. I mean, you can connect all these tops, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And until Intel shows me you can get over this double top, I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Over 31 and three quarters with volume, heavy volume, mighty. Yesterday was a nice engulfing reversal bar off support near the 50. That's a good sign. So let's see if we can do that. And your target then would be 36 and 39. AMD. I really like the way this is looking of late. Now, this is a massive decline. I kept telling everybody in my room to stay away from the stock. It's got bearish tendencies. However, and even that looked like a bear flag, but it broke to the upside through the moving averages, through lateral price resistance, and then it's flagging or wedging in this area. If you can get over today's high, which is about 79 and a quarter, I can get this up to 80. I think you'll see 85, 87, 88, 95, something like that. Qualcomm, like many of the tech stocks, big drop, but a nice pop off the low. The breakout recur occurred. Noted the moving average is crossing over, always a bullish sign. See the crossover of the moving averages? When that happens, it indicates trend change direction, direction change. One, two, three, four tests, and now resistance 128. You get to 128, 128, 15 here, across there. You're likely to test the major declining top line up around 133.4. That's where I would want to see the stock get through. Now, it does look like a bottoming type pattern, but it's not wide enough, I think, although there is a double bottom and then a platform, which is always bullish. It's possible we've seen a low on this one, but it might be something similar to here where you double bottom and ran up and then rolled over. You got to be careful with Qualcomm. Disney, that's a lousy chart, folks. And it has been for two years. Now, look at the chop in this. Gap up, gap down, gap up. I don't think the stock knows what it wants to do. Right now, it's a big wedge. Take a look. This wedge breaks to the upside and the decline tops gets taken out. Then your target's going to be 109 and 117.18. Those are my targets if it breaks out. And if it comes with volume. ARRY happens to be a tech trader swing, and it has been since I'll show you. One, two, three, four, five waves down, which is basic Elliott wave stuff. Comes down to the bottom on big volume and then blows out. Then it pulls back in a one, two, three, four, five wave decline. Forms what? A perfect inverse head and shoulder pattern. There's your breakaway gap. This is where we went long, 14 and a half. The target was 19 and 24. We reached both targets. We pulled back down, tested the neckline breakout, created a new rising channel. It ran up to resistance and backed off. If ARRY gets to 24, my target's at 28 and 34. Possibly as high as 40 longer term. I really like this chart. Well, Mike, I, of course I look at weekly charts, but they're not asking me for weekly charts now. And I don't need to look at them right now unless I need a longer term picture. But if you have anything you want to look at in a weekly chart, feel free to ask me. I'd be glad to assist you. For example, in many charts, there's a weekly chart on ARRY. Same pattern as a daily, really. It's not giving me, you know, if you were looking at a stock like Intel, then it's been around forever. And then a weekly chart is meaningful. Um, you can see the massive resistance up here at 43. Massive. So one of the things about Intel, for example, should it get over 32 and a half? There's room to run. Anybody with a question about any other charts or stocks? F FCX is the tech trader current swing. And I'll show you why. Well, first of all, the, the one, two, three, four, and truncated fifth wave with a base on FCX broke through key resistance. That was right through here. When it broke through there, I put a swing on it at 34 and a half, I think it was. My target's worth 39.40. We take 39.26. Secondary target, 
43. We haven't got there yet. We reached 41 at 13 and backed off of the inside day today. I really like the look of this. Copper is moving, precious metals are up. I think 43 and a half. And then around at 48.50 would be my targets. CDNS. Mike, I draw all these lines. It's easy. You know, you just do control D for draw and start drawing. I'm sorry, it's shift D, how am I thinking? And then, it, then you can just go like that and pull it. In this case here, Client top sign breakaway gap through up to resistance in that zone and through. So CDNS looks awfully good. And my target is going to be 193, give or take. Very nice. Good, good chart. Apple. Well, Apple's got work to do. It's a very strange stock the way it's been acting, especially the last two months. You see the way this has been trading in here and looking? Where's my lines? Where the, oh, there they are. You can see that it broke down to support, snapped back. It has an inside day today. Um, I would say Apple has got this pattern now of declining top lines, but it also has rising bottom line. So this could be construed as a base pattern similar to what it had in here. It's going to have to break out and above, in my opinion, 153 and a half, and then take out 157 and a half to start going. Then your targets are 164 and 175, 76. Anybody else with a question on anything else? X, L, Y. Well, like many other uh, stocks, charts, indexes, et cetera, Markets remarkable forming inverse head and shoulders or double bottoms. In this case, yeah, probably closer to a double bottom. But here's your neckline or resistance line 149, 147, 148. So let's get it above 147, 48. And you may be on your way. There is going to be some resistance across here 152 and a half. Then I'd be looking for 162. So 152.62 if it gets over 149. Apple downside. Boy, it is a bull guy. I wouldn't short Apple. Uh, I wouldn't look for downside until it breaks 140. Then your targets are 133.4 and 129. And if it cracks that, Katie barred the door, the market's going to fall apart. We're down to 123.4. Um, that's my take. Um, well, Mike, I don't trade a lot of options, so I'm not the guy to ask. You should ask the option guy. But the answer is always, you can, you can sell options for a premium, but most people in my room buy options long and my swing picks, they do very well. Again, come to thetechtrader.com and check it out for two weeks for free. SQ, boy, I used to love this stock. This is one of my biggest winners ever, ever, ever. When it broke out here at 11, I had a big, big amount of shares. And you can see it ran all the way up to uh, near 100, and then eventually got to 275. See any other questions? Yes. Um, on SQ, by the, way, by the way, again, I just want to tell you that I am not enamored with it, but I'll give you this take. If you can get this above and there's a line through here, say 77 and three quarters, 78, then you got a much better chance of like 92, 100, 110, that type of thing. But for now, it looks promising, but it's not something I'm going to be actively or aggressive with. The QQQs, well, we had the big pop and the pullback. You just don't want to see this breakdown ideally right where it is. 
Um, we also want to take a look at the cues from that standpoint. A peak there, a peak there, bottoms in that range. This is a big resistance area at 313. I'm not surprised it pulled back. But I would do this now. It's not my cup of tea, uh, but I think if the market does what I think it might, it should get the cues to about 303 and then 310, 15. Devon Energy. Well, a double, triple top up here at 80 range. Current action is a falling wedge. I personally do not like oil. Everyone else does. I don't like them. I think they're toppy. They have long runs. I think the price of oil is due to come down. That's just my take. I could be wrong. Um, but, you know, there's, they're, they're artificially keeping the price of oil up. We'll see how long that lasts. Um, if I see the Devon Energy get over 71 with that, with volume, then it's got to take out 74. There's a double top there. So it's got work to do. As a matter of fact, it's more than a double top there. Look at that. 74 is resistance, no question. And if this breaks down under 65, look out. SOL, I don't like this chart at all. There's many better charts, many better charts in that group. SPWR, JK Soul is even better, but I like run and SPWR right now better than SOL, that's for sure. That's not a good chart. One more look at it. Until it gets over, I mean, it's a cheapie in that group, and there's a reason why it is. See that resistance? Until it gets over 505, 508 with volume, I'm not interested. Today's bar is very bad. By the way, the market still hasn't broken out. PLD. Look, it's a slow ascent off the low, but it's a steady one. Do I like it? Sure. Why? Because it's above the moving averages. They've crossed over and it's holding its trend line. Where would I stop it? Probably right there. Under 110 sign our target. 127.28. Anybody else? All right, BHC, I like this one. Ouch. Problem with BHC has got a double top. So there is resistance and big resistance at eight and a quarter. My target's nine and a quarter right now because of all that resistance in there. And then 11. So nine and a quarter, 11 might be targets for BHC, but it's a bit on the come as they say. Plus, um, I don't like the fact that many other stocks look better than this. This has broken its trend channel. See it? It's in, if you're in it long, you better stop this one under 48, 48 and a quarter. Under there, you might see a deeper dip into the 46 range for a 50% Fib retracement. I don't, you know, I don't necessarily like this one. It's just too many other that look better than this. Plenty of software stocks that look better than that. Any other questions, folks? Western Digital. Nothing to see here. One, two, three, four, five waves down and that, that's the best it can do. Maybe if WDC gets a run over 41 and a half with volume, I'll be interested. Right now, with so many good looking charts and this in a downtrend, why take any chances until it breaks out with volume? Key in trading focus to pay up and know that a stock's on its way to try to anticipate that and get hammered and watch this go down in another wave down. What's to prevent this from taking this line, cracking it, and running down to 25. It could very well happen. I don't know why, but Western Digital is a lousy looking chart and I'd avoid it. REMX. Well, I like the rare earth group. I like NP in particular, but even NP doesn't have a great chart. I would rather, this is by the way, NP materials is the number two largest 
rare earth company in the world behind China. In North America, it's number one. At some point, this is going to be a monster stock, in my opinion. But if you want to play REMX, quite frankly, it's got a work to do, a lot of work to do. It's been in a trading range like this for a year, and it's going nowhere. I went over McDonald's earlier, but I'd be glad to do it again. Beautiful base breakout of wedge for me. I'm bullish. Once he gets out and above 180, 281, 2, 295, and 312 are targets. CRM got hammered today. Lousy chart. Look, folks, all I know is the stock has been down from 315 to 140, and that was the earnings report. Nobody liked it. Um, Maybe if it writes itself and then takes that out over 166.7, maybe. But for now, it's too vulnerable for me to be even, even attempted. Well, on boat, which is Sonic Global Shipping ETF. Yeah, it stuck his head out over the decline top sign. But again, lack of volume, technicals flat. I don't care about a stock that does that. I'm not interested. Um, B, D, R, Y, same thing. I, don't, I just don't like shippers right now. Yeah, I only do stocks, no futures. If you want me to look at oil, I'll, I look at USO. For me, it's a massive top formation, but, but. I'd be willing to be wrong if I see this over USO over 70, 79, could get it rolling again. But for me, it looked to me at one point like a left shoulder had right shoulder and it was breaking down only to snap back. Now it retested held. I just don't know what to make of oil. When I don't know what, when I don't know what to make of something, I stay away from it. Same thing here with Micron. Teresa Williams, I know that name. Uh, Teresa, look. We had a one, two, three, four, five wave decline, and it's right at the bottom. Only if NU shows me it can get over 65 with energy, would I be want to go long for move to 75 and 85. But for now, there's, again, there's so many better stocks. It's too sloppy for me. Maybe forming a base here, maybe. Royal Gold. My favorite entire stock, my favorite stock in the entire gold group. Look at this chart over the last 20 years. Now, I think gold in general is bottom. Uh, many of the, this is an inverse head and shoulders or whatever you want to call it, bottom line, base breakout, pull back, pop, pull back, pop. So at this point, there's resistance right here. If we can get above this zone, say above 118, I'm looking for 128 and then 145 again. SQM, Chilean chemical company. Take a look, quadruple top. Why would you want to be in it? Well, if you're in it, you're, you're waiting for it to break out. If you want to enter it, you wait for 112 and a half with volume and go long. Right now, after many, many years of running, it's got a beautiful long-term chart. A long-term target is 170. The intermediate target be about 135. Dutch Brothers, that's bros. V bottom with a platform. Oh, I didn't realize this stock. I was watching this for a while. Um, again, at resistance, get it to 39 with energy. It'll probably test 41 and a half pretty quickly. And then maybe we can get to 45. Those are my targets. 
cube, smart. I don't like when a stock breaks out and reverses like that. So that's key, key resistance now. <coughs> Excuse me, 42 and three quarters. I think we'll get you up to there. 46 would be my target. I would follow that up with a move to 50. So 46 and 50 possible targets on cube. But you can see one, two, three, four, five waves down. This is an ugly chart and it, it is trying to base out, but, but so many better charts out there. US Steel, I showed you earlier, along with CLF, it's trying to break out of a big basing pattern that's been in place for about five, six months. Um, if it does go, 30, 34 are targets. So we have a few more minutes if anybody else has a question. Well, we actually have quite a bit of time. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna go over some charts that I like. You can see some of our swing trades. One moment, I bring it up. Now, this morning, I put out EHTH. Why? Well, it's been in a very, very long decline, very long, orderly. But more importantly, it's finally taken out a key resistance level with a huge volume thrust. When I see that, I go long. My targets on this one are uh, five and three quarters and seven. BRMA broke out over a key, key resistance today. I'm looking for a move to 17 and a half. Seco Environmental, sector breakout. Now it's pulled back, giving everyone a chance to enter again. The only problem with this pop is it really didn't come in enough volume. I can see why it might pull back. But look at that chart. I think this is one, two, three, four, and a one, two, meaning there's a fifth of a fifth to come. And that means three, four, and five in Elliott wave terms. ABDL, beautiful long-term chart. When I saw this pop here, I, get, I was long here. Sold it there, looking, and we got back in when it broke out again. Now I'm looking for 11 and three quarters and 14. Geo, when it popped out here, we put a swing on it a week ago. You can see what it's done since it continues to run. So I can go on and on and on. I want to answer some more questions. DQ, this is the one of the this is one of the leading Chinese semiconductor companies. I like it a lot. Um, inverse head and shoulders. I'm, I'm going to say that if DQ takes out 58 and a half, I would look for for uh, 65 and then 72. Looks good, I like this chart. AQWA, Global Clean Water ETF. Well, with the chart currently in the condition it's in with one, two, three, four, the fifth wave should get you to the 15 and a quarter and a half area. That's resistance, however. Should it get through that, then you got a chance of a much bigger move, but there may be a problem getting through it. For now, um, Trader One, I got the, I like it. And it looks like it's trending. So if you're with it, if you're in it, stay with it. Um, I don't want to see an under 13 and a half, but I believe 15 and a quarter thereabout would be your target. DFEN, another ETF, it looks like. For the aerospace industry. The resistance right there. So it got through it, pulled back, it 
punched through it or to it again. When you see that much resistance, you figure that's got to be your target. So 24 and a quarter and a half would be my target on this one. And Netflix, boy, I really love the way it's acted of late. Love this chart. Base breakout, platform breakaway gap, retested, fill the gap, pop, pull back and pop. Wow. Well, the big, 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 big back gap, the 331, 333. Once you get through that, you can run a swing all the way back to 395, 400. I don't know if it does that, but that would be some move from 164. The, the way I've drawn the angle of ascent, it's likely we have a problem about 335 in that area, give or take three points. NVIDIA, love that company. One of my biggest winners ever. I gave out a tech trader swing on this one. Right there when it broke, when I had a breakaway gap. At 25. And this is, you know, including split. 25 to 346. At this point, with a one, two, three, four, five wave decline to the bottom of the channel and a reversal, this stock acted well the way before a lot of the others did. Love this company, love the chart. I think it's going to 190 to 205 in the next move. Anybody else with a question on any stock? That's why NA. Well, synaptics, semiconductors, boy, is that an ugly chart. I remember going short the stock when it formed the bear wedge. Take a look, came down, broke the channel, rallied back to it, formed the wedge and started to break down. That was where the short was at 200. A few months later, 81, one, two, three, four, five waves down. So yeah, um, it may have exhausted itself on the downside. And basic LA wave analysis says, after five wave, you go long. Well or it should turn. Take a look at this. This bottom, this, this bottom, snap back twice, couldn't get through. Snap back again, backed off and snapping back again. So what do we need to do with this? It's got to go through 108 with energy. Today's high, get this, 107.99. So we get through 108. I uh, would say that as a chance of being first 125 and then 148. So 125, 148 would be targets for me if it breaks out. Don't anticipate it. Well, NUGT and JNUG are favorites of mine. They're great day trading stocks. But with the price of gold doing what it's doing, all of them breaking out. This is looking great. Now, there's a big problem with Nugget across here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five lows in this area broken. That's resistance, my man. 39, three quarters, 40. If you get through 40, I can see 52, 53. At this point, though, it may get up near there and pull back, but I like it. I already talked about LMT. It looks very much like McDonald's and I like the chart. It's a wedge. Where does it go? Well, it would be new all-time highs if it gets through there, wouldn't it? Here's what it's going to go to. You bet, you, you ready for this? 100 to 105 points from here. That's right. Around 560, 65. Right there. From the low. I like Barrick, one of my favorite goals. Look at the breakout today. Wow, 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 wow. Whoa, I think gold is stellar here. These patterns, V bottoms, right here, extension, breakaway. My target now is 19 and a half, 
21 and a half, 23 and a half. By the XX. I mean, I have a base pullback. This is a good one, very good one. There's a double bottom there, 466 target. Followed by 520. This is very good. Tops, well, it's been popular of late. Big pullback today. Roll over Beethoven. I told all my people this morning to buy it right there. We had a really nice surge. From the wind, looked like it was going to go again. Came down and I said, must stop on the 470. It's currently 368. I wouldn't touch this with a 10-foot pole. I don't care. There's too many other stocks out there. Until this gets over six, you know, right now, it's complete speculation. I don't like the pattern. Costco. It's a big hit on Costco. I would stop this under 494, period. The fact that it pulled back after its earnings report Troubles me. And you can see the trend line as well. So be careful with that one. I love AG. AG and EXK, my two favorite junior silvers. I also like SVM and a couple others, but in terms of AG itself, it's a little bit behind the eight ball. I mean, it trails some of the others. It doesn't look as good, but it looks good as long as it holds that trend line. I target 11 and 14. Are there any other questions, folks? For Anka, my pleasure. Iron Mountain. Well, Anka. I'll always look at where resistance is and tell you my opinion. And I always throw in declining top signs too. This is a resistance zone. There's no question that Iron Mountain has resistance up here after thinking about shorting it. But I don't short strength, I short weakness. Well, let's put it this way. I short strength in weak trends. This one's too strong to short. I'm assuming you mean long. Um, and I would have to say that on a very long-term basis, There's your trend. It's a beauty, which tells me that eventually, sometime in the next few months, it's a $70 stock potentially. MRO. Well, again, I'm not a fan of oil. I used to be. APA was my biggest winner in a long time. It went from seven to 55 or so. Um, MRO is a beautiful long-term trend. Nice double top up here. If we get through the double top, sure. We can go to 38.40, 45.50. I don't know. But for now, one thing I definitely would do, if you're trading this stock, you better have a stop right there. Stop MRO under 28 and, 28 and a quarter and don't look back. Starbucks. That's a good chart. Breaking it out of key resistance. Targeting the area where the top pattern broke. That is resistance. And guess what? It's right up against it. it Maybe tough for Starbucks to make a lot of progress in here, but. And I also would like to see, look, it's a one, two, three, so it needs to maybe pull back and consolidate. But if Starbucks gets through it, your targets have to be upwards of 1, 10, 11, and then 1, 17, 18. I think that concludes the hour. 
So folks, once again, you're more than welcome to come to thetechtrader.com and check out my site. I think you're gonna be very pleased by what you see. It's a really neat trading room and you can see the market just closed. Everybody in the room comments all day. I give them tons of advice, lots of swing and day trades. Please come in and check us out for a while and I think you'll enjoy it.